Hello everyone, welcome to our session on application auto scaling through elastic Kubernetes part. Uh, my name is Kathy Zhang. I'm a senior principal engineer at Intel. Along with me is Teresa Shan, who is a senior cloud software engineer at Intel. Let me go to the next slide. Right. Oh. Um, this is what we are going to cover in today's talk. Uh, first, we are going to talk about what is Elastic Kubernetes part, and then we will uh, go through some use cases on why do we need it. And then Teresa will take over and talk about how do we support this. And she will also do a POC demo, and uh, finally we'll show some test result. So what do we mean by Elastic Kubernetes part? Um, by the by, the elastic communities part, um, what we what we mean is that um, in when the application need to scale out, instead of creating multiple parts, multiple application parts, um, with elastic part, um, you can create multiple application containers inside an existing running part. For example, as shown in this diagram. The user first create a pod with one application container and another sidecar sidecar container, and then the user can specify uh, a replica number. For example, a replica number equals ten, and then after that, the system will take over, will automatically automatically create a uh, ten new uh, uh, replica uh, replicated application instances inside the same running part. So why do we need it? Um, the first use case is function as a service. Uh, in function as a service, uh, the system needs to scale out, automatically support scale out and scale in um, based on the incoming uh, uh, requests. So for example, at the very beginning, um, the system is running just one, you know, uh, function, a function uh, container, and then when the users, you know, uh, updates the replica, and uh, the system needs to automatic automatically scales out um, more container application containers, and so it will scale out that application containers inside the same running part. The second use scenario is container network function. So CNF, um, the, as this diagram shows at the beginning, um, the user will create an uh, application container and along with that, uh, he will create, he or she will create a firewall CNF and the load balancer CNF. And then when the network security attack is detected, a DPI container needs to be created uh, or added as a set car to that uh, application container. So instead of creating, uh, instead of deleting the existing pod, which has two set cars, and creating a new pod with three set cars, with elastic pod, you know, you can create, we can create, we can reuse the existing pod and create uh, uh, a new uh, DPI CNF uh, set car inside the existing pod. So this will uh, reduce the, um, the, the creation time, the late creation latency, and also to, uh, you know, to save the resource utilization rate. The third use case is in confidential computing. Um, in confidential computing, um, when you create an application part, it involves three steps. The first step is to pull um, an encrypted application, the encrypted application container image from a remote image registry to a sub enclave. And then the image management service will then do, uh, will then decode and unpack the image. And a testation agent, which run inside the same enclave, same sub enclave will uh, do the attestation and retrieve the dec decryption key. And then the 
uh, image management service will launch the application container in a separate application enclave. So the enclave means a security running environment uh, for the uh, for any uh, container or any module running inside it. So if we um, need to create two application containers uh, in existing mechanism, we need to create two pods. Then you know each pod creation involves the three steps. So basically, if we need to create two pods, we need to repeat you know the three steps the three steps twice. With the elastic pod mechanism, um, the two application containers can share the same stop enclave. So we only so we only need to do the three steps once. So um, the, the step one, sorry, the step one, step two, once. And then you know um, the we can do the step three for each as we launch to launch each application container. So this will also um, reduce you know the overhead of doing you know the step one the step two multiple times if we need to uh, create multiple application containers and the fourth um, um, use case is um, performance optimization um, with without elastic part if a uh, uh, part if a contain application container spec changes um, there will be a, a multiple um, part spec changes um, requests sent to the kubelet component. And the kubelet component will send multiple messages to the parts. Basically, you know, send one message to each part. But if for suppose if we have you know 10 application containers which you know maps to 10 parts, then you know there will be 10 um, part spec change messages uh, sent to the kubelet. And the kubelet will send you know, uh, 10 messages, uh, you know, to the, uh, to the pods, to the pod worker, to the 10 pod workers. And then each pod worker will send a pod status update to the API server. So totally there will be 10 um, pod status update to the API server. But with the uh, Elastic Pod, um, they, they only because all these 10 containers run inside the same pod, inside one pod, and there's only one pod worker. So there's only one pod ch spec change message sent to Kubelet, and Kubelet only need to send that message to one pod worker, and that one pod work and that pod worker will only send one pod status update message to API server. So this greatly reduces the um, message communication overhead between all the different components of the Kubernetes framework. Now I'm going to hand it over to Teresa to go through how we support. Thanks, Cassie. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Teresa. I'm a cloud software engineer from Intel. And welcome to our presentation. Uh, today, I'm going to walk you through the design details of our elastic pod method. And also, I would el elaborate what we've, been, we've changed to the current Kubernetes code base. And after that, we would go through the lifecycle management of the replicated containers. And then finally, we are going to quickly go through a demo. Uh, firstly, let's take a look at the uh, high-level architecture of Kubernetes. From a high level, a Kubernetes environment consists of a control plane, also known as the master node, and a distributed storage system which is the ATCD database, and a number of worker nodes running on the, uh, run, running, which runs the Kubelet agents. The control plane is the system that continuously manages the object status. It also works for, works to make the desired replication, uh, repli uh, to make the desired status or actual status of the replica to match the desired state of the object. And, and uh, as you can see from the, from the left uh, illustration, the control plane is made up of major three components. They are the API server, the Kube controller manager, and the Kube scheduler. The API server provides API to support the lifecycle orchestration. 
such as scaling, updates, etc., for different types of applications. And the scheduler is responsible for the scheduling of pods across the work nodes in the cluster. And the Kube Controller Manager is a demo that, that embeds the control loops shipped with Kubernetes. On the right hand, the, the worker nodes are actually the machines that really runs containers through container runtimes and, and maintain the life cycle of the pods and the containers on them. And the bullets below this is the major change we made to Kubernetes. First of all, in order to specify the replica value, we add, we, we've added a replica field in the pod spec. I will discuss it later in the next page. Additionally, we also modified the API server to validate the replica value and set the replica, replication state. We also modified the Kube scheduler to calculate whether the nodal resource fit for the replication. And besides that, we add logics in Kubelet to make it delete or uh, create or delete containers by reading the replica value. In the pod spec, we extend the pod status by adding a new data struct to manage the life cycle of the, of the replicated containers. I will talk more about it in our POC demo. Here are the changes we've made to the pod spec. As you can see on the up, up, uh, up left uh, right corner of the slides, a field called replica has been added to, into the pod spec under the container struct. The replica value specifies the total number of the running instance of the container, including the original container and its copies. The value ranges from zero to a predefined positive integer number, which could be defined and loaded into API server's startup command. Zero is permitted here because in a serverless environment, users are usually built for, uh, per their usage. And, and in container, uh, for cont uh, in our POC, we allow users to delete all the containers in a pod only keeping the pod sandbox running. In that case, the function instance are created based on the volume of requests. In addition, as you can see on the bottom right of this, of this page, the container statuses are also extended to check the replication containers status. It also watches the replicated containers life cycle changes by using the POEG component in the, Kubelet, in the Kubelet demo. As well as the pod spec change, we also defined a set of states to manage the life cycle of the replicated containers. There are five states. The first is the unset state. Unset state is a ready state before the replication. The replication states will also be set to unset when the replication is completed. The next is the proposed state. Proposed state is a state set by the API server. It is set when the pod, pod spec in the patch request is valid. The in progress state indicates that the nodes allocate for resource fits for the replication. It is set by the Kube scheduler. The fourth state is an infeasible state. Infeasible state is set when the resource, the resource request is beyond the node's capability, meaning that it is impossible to uh, complete the replication at all on the node. The last state is a timeout state. A timeout interval is set when the Kubelet starts. A timeout state indicates that it takes longer than the timeout interval to complete the replication. Then Kubelet would stop the trying and set the replica state to timeout. Then let's move over to the left to take a look at the status flow. 
from the left on, containers flow a, a follow a defined life cycle, starting in an unset state, moving through the proposed state when, when the replication value is valid. Then it will move through either in an infeasible state or an in, in progress state or keeps in the pro uh, proposed state, depending on whether the node resource fits for the re request. In our elastic pod method, the replicate containers will be scheduled onto the node that hosts the primary container, as the pod can only be scheduled once in its life cycle. Therefore, the scheduler continuously watches for the pod in proposed state and checks whether checks whether, uh, whether the node resource could, could fit the re replication request. It will be set in infeasible state if the node's total capacity cannot meet the request, or it keeps in proposed state if the current resource cannot fit the request, but the node's total capacity can. It will transit into the in-progress state when there are sufficient resources for the replication. Then from the in-progress state, the container moves through the timeout state or an un unset state or keeps in in-progress state depending on whether the replication is achieved or not. It goes back to unset state when the actual replica equals to the desired replica, meaning that the re replication is completed. It goes to timeout state when the replication time exceeds the timeout interval. Otherwise, it will uh, stay in the in-progress state when the replication is not yet complete. Let's flip over to take a look at, look at the system flowchart. On the left corner, as you can see, when a user sends a patch request to the API server, to update the replicate value in the pod spec. Then the API server will, will validate the replicate value, set the replica stage to a proposed. In the meantime, the scheduler watches for the pod's replica stage. When it is in proposed state, the scheduler would re-evaluate whether the node resource fits. The scheduler sets the scheduler set the replicate stage status to infeasible when the resource request is beyond the node's cap capability. Set it to proposed when the node resource does not fit for the time being. Set it to in progress when the replication is good to go. After that, both the scheduler cache and the ETCD database will be updated accordingly. When a container is in in progress state, Kubelet will be triggered to create or delete containers by reading the con replica value. The, the, Kubelet, uh, the, the replica stage will be set to unset if the actual replica equals to the desired replica. The replica stage will be in, in progress state if the, nodes, if the node is not available for the time being. Otherwise, if the if the uh, time if it takes longer than the uh, timeout interval to complete the replication, the replica stage will be set to timeout. All right. After having a overview of our detailed design, I'm going to show you how how it really works by a demo. In the demo, we are going to demonstrate the following scenarios. Firstly. We're, we're going to demonstrate uh, scaling up and down container in a pod that hosts only one container, including scaling down the container into zero replica. And secondly, we are going to demonstrate a pod that hosts two, two containers and uh, scaling up or down both of them concurrently. Then let's quickly go through the demo. Firstly, we are going to create a pod that hosts only one container, and the container has two replicas.
Let's take a look at the post back. As you can see, a replica, a replica value is specified here, and the value is two, meaning that two instances of the container would be running in the pod. Then let's try to create a pod. Check the pod status. There are two instances up and running. And take a close look at the pod status. As you can see here, we add a pod struct under the pod status. There are a couple of fields in the replica object. The container name lists the name of the containers, including the original container name and the replicated, replicated containers names. And the field replica stands for the actual number of the running instances. The field replica time is the time Kubernetes starts to make replications. The field re reserved replica stands for the desired number of instances to be started. As you can see here, the replica value equals to the reserved replica value. And the replica stage is in unset state. It means that the replication is successful. Next. We are going to scale down the stress container into zero replica. Before that, we are going to send a patch request to the API server by specifying the replica value to zero. Let's check the status. As you can see here, both the actual replica value and the reserved replica value has become zero, meaning that there are zero instances running in this pod. Next, we are going to scale up the stress container to five instances. We're trying to send a patch request to, to the API server. There are five instances are up and running now. Let's take a close look at the pod status. As you can see, there are three additional containers has been created for the replication. And the actual replica value and the reserved replica value are both five. Next, we are going to create a pod that hosts two containers. Let's take a look at the pod spec. There are two containers in this pod. The, the container named the stress is the primary container, and the, the container named the debug is a sidecar container for troubleshooting. And when is the replica the replica value is not set, the default replica is, is, is one. We're trying to create this pod. Check the status. And we are going to verify whether the default replica value is one or not. As you can see, both the actual replica value is one. And, and then we are going to scale both of the containers to two replicas. Send the patch request to the API server and check the status. There are four instances are up and running now. Yeah, yeah out of the four, two are for debug, two are for the stress container, right? Yes, right. And as you can see here, the stress container has two replicas now, and the debug container has two replicas as well, meaning that the replication is successful. Okay, based on the implementation demoed above, we also performed a test to compare the time used to create replications, use Kubernetes replica set, 
waste the time using our elastic pod method. The test is performed on an Intel NUC with 16 gigabyte memory and eight core CPU, and it is performed in an all-in-one Kubernetes cluster. Our code base is implemented based on Kubernetes 1.23 code base. And the container image we use for test is Debian 11, which is pre-downloaded onto the host. On the left hand, as you can see, the column chart illustrates the time used to create replication replicate containers. The X Excel access represents the replica value, which is scaling from scales from one replica. The Y axis represents the time consumption in seconds. The blue column represents the time consumption by our elastic pod method. And the red column represents the time consum consumption by the replica set method. As you can see from the column chart on the left, the startup latency goes slightly, goes up slightly when the replica value rises using our elastic pod method. The data fluctuates around one second because Kubernetes tracks the container status every one second. The default release interval deeply impacts our, the, the startup latency here. In contrast, when using the replica set method, the time consumption increases rapidly when the replica goes, when the replica goes up. In comparison, the elastic pod method dramatically cut down on the time to replicate the container, especially when the replica value is very large. Based on the test data, we could conclude that the higher the scaling concurrency is, the more performance gains of using our elastic pod method. And also seems that the replica value does not have much impact on the scaling latency. And our elastic pod method reduces the code startup latency up to 80, up to 87% when adding 10 replicas. All right, that's all we have for today. And thanks for watching. If you have any interest in our project, don't hesitate to contact us. And I look forward to your feedback. Thank yeah. you. Uh, yeah, if you have any question, feel free to reach out to, uh, to us uh, by our email. Our email is, is listed at the beginning of the slide. Yeah, thank okay. you. Thank you.